Well, hello, All Saints School, and a happy new year to you all. I hope you had a good Christmas break, even if it wasn't quite what you had planned. Here we are in January, and we're starting a new theme. And today, Wednesday, the 6th of January, is a particular special day in the uh, Christian calendar, which I will touch upon as I look at a story. And I'm just going to share our screen so I can get it all up and running and tell you about it. So this is a story that I'm sure you've heard many a times because it's often uh, seen as part of the Christmas story, even though really it's not quite part of Christmas. It's after Jesus's birth and way in the east there were some men who saw this incredible star shining in the sky and these men they were called magi which um well it sort of linked the word the word magic i guess these were people who would would read the stars and read other sort of um things and, and sort of try and work out what they meant whether there was a special meaning and these Magi, these wise men, saw this star and, and thought, well, this, this isn't just an ordinary star. We, we need to check it out. What, what's this all about? So they went to their scrolls and they read them all. And they came to the conclusion that that star shining way in the west was indicating that a special king had been born. A king of the Jews. And so they were so struck by this news that they thought, we, we need to go and see this. It's important that we find out what's going on. And so off they went. And they trotted into Israel. And they probably thought, well, kings. Kings are generally born in important places, things like palaces. So let's go to the palace in Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel, and see if we can find this newborn king. And so they turned up only to find that there was this guy called King Herod, who was not too impressed. And uh, he wanted to know what was going on, why these strangers from a foreign land were coming and asking to see the new king when he was in charge still. And so he called for his, um, his wise men, people of the Jewish faith, and they got their scrolls out and read them and went to Herod and said, well, there is, there's, there is some indication that at some stage, a, a special person will be born in, in Bethlehem. I think that that's where these wise men of, of uh, well, where they look, where they're looking for, not not Jerusalem. And so Herod sent the wise men off, saying, "Don't look here for this this king you're looking for. You need to go to Bethlehem." And so off they trotted and followed the star until they got to Bethlehem. And there they gave Jesus, who by now is a little boy. Hence, it's not really the Christmas story. He's not a baby any longer. They gave him some presents of gold, frankincense and myrrh. There's something else in this picture you might think is a bit strange. We often think that there were three wise men. There's no indication in the Bible how many there were. We just know that they gave gold, frankincense and myrrh. And so... This term, we're looking at the theme of generosity. I wonder, when we use that word, what does it mean to you? What, what do you think generosity means? Well, I looked it up in my dictionary and this is the answer that I got. A willingness to give help or support, especially more than is usual or expected. And I guess you could say that the wise men were generous because they gave these incredible gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. I remember when we had our, our babies, my wife and I, well, I can't recall anyone giving us any gold. 
we got nappies and we got baby grows and romper suits and things like that, but no gold and no smelly stuff like frankincense and myrrh. So, yeah, we could sort of say that the wise men were generous. They went to another country and gave really expensive gifts to a total stranger. But there's more to this story than the giving of the wise men. And this is why I said at the beginning that Wednesday the 6th of January is an important day. It's, it's called Epiphany in the Christian calendar. And it's when we recognise that Jesus appeared not just to the people of his own country, Israel, the Jewish people, but he appeared to others, to foreign people like the wise men. And I guess today that doesn't seem particularly unusual or strange. We live in a world now where travel is, is relatively easy, <laughs> even during COVID, and so we're quite used to seeing people who may be originated from other countries in our own country. But it wasn't like that in Jesus's day. I just want to point out that here we have a map showing well, one possible journey. We're not entirely sure where the wise men came from, the Magi came from, but it is believed, it says that they traveled to the west, they came from the east to see Jesus. And the Magi, well, it's a word that was used in sort of the, the sort of Persian area. And so people reckon that they probably came from somewhere like Iraq. And as I say, they were therefore from another country, foreigners. And in Jesus's time, not just the Jewish religion, but most religions believed that the God they worshipped was their God and a God who was not interested in any other people. So for somebody from another country to say, we need to come and see this king of the Jews was extremely unusual. It wasn't so unusual that the shepherds might want to go and see Jesus. They, after all, were Jews. But there was something strange going on here, that people from other countries wanted to see Jesus. And not only that, as I say, these magi, these wise men, used the star. They saw this star and they said, that must mean something important. Let's go and see what our scrolls, our, our information tells us about this, this star. In the Jewish holy book, the Torah, the first book, what we use as the Bible today, it says that you should not consult you shouldn't look at things like stars and anything else to try and read into the present or the future it says that people that did that ought to be stoned to death so not only were these foreigners coming to see jesus but they were people who were doing something that the jewish religion said was wrong and yet they came to see Jesus and it was recorded in the Bible. You see, the incredible thing I think is not only that the wise men were generous to Jesus, but it's the start of realizing how generous God is to everybody. And he showed that by Jesus being born in Bethlehem at Christmas. The most famous verse in the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son. Jesus didn't just come for people of Israel. 
he didn't just come for Jewish people. Jesus came for all people. He didn't just come for people who followed the Jewish law. He came for people that did things that were against the Jewish law. He came for everybody. And that's a sign of just how generous God is. There's nobody that has ever walked this earth that God hasn't loved. And there's nobody that has ever walked this earth or ever will walk this earth who Jesus didn't come for. And that shows, I guess, what perfect generosity looks like. Over the next few weeks, we'll be looking at various aspects of generosity. Recognise that it's not just about giving gifts or giving money. It's about giving so much more. As we see, as Jesus lived, as an example of that incredible generosity. Until then, let's finish with a prayer. So, dear God, we thank you. We thank you for Christmas. We thank you for the opportunity for us to share gifts with one another. But we thank you for that message that Jesus came for the whole world. That your generosity knows no bounds. That you love everybody. Not just the ones that are easy to get on with, but even those who make a mess up of things, who make mistakes, who deliberately go against you. Help us to learn a bit about how to be generous, not just with those who are friends, but those who are strangers those who we struggle to get on with. Help us to share what we have as you share your love with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so let's finish with the Lord's Prayer as we say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So I'll see you again next week. In the meantime, take care of one another and see if you can find ways of being generous. God bless.